create a multiplication tutor to help us learn our multiplication tables. So do a file new project. And I got an example. Multiplication tutor. Click OK. Now I'm going to have a, um, a label. This will be my first number. Uh, this will be the times. This will be my second number. This will be the equals. This will be the text box where I put my answer. This will be the button for generating a new um, new problem. This will be the button for checking my problem. This will be the um, label for the right, the amount for the right, label for the wrong, amount for the wrong. Okay. Let me do a rectangular select and select all those. Change them all to 20. Let's click outside of that and I'll start moving things. So up here, this is good. The text on this is going to read. This is the number right. This will be our actually the amount that's right. And um, hmm. let me put a zero there. There we go. I'm going to put uh, here for the number wrong. And this will be zero for text. Okay, now I need to label this. Um, so I'm going to give this, an, or not label it, I mean give it a name. So this will be LB right. And this one will be LB wrong. Okay. So I got my um, box over there. I got this, this this and this okay this this is going to be my equals so let me change its text say equals move that a little bit closer there this will be my number this will be my multiplication so I'll change its text to be the big X I guess Maybe a little X. Okay. Now this label here, I'm going to have it as zero to begin with. So I can kind of see size-wise where it should fall. Give it a name. This will be LB underscore num1. This one uh, will be LB underscore num2. This one will be TB answer. Now I'm going to change the text of this label to be zero. I could al alternatively make them uh, invisible to begin with. And um, hmm, I'll move that over a little bit, move this over a little bit. Okay, this button should say generate new problem. And this one will say check.
I'll say check answer. Okay. So I'm going to select those, resize them. There we go. Well, let's build this piece by piece. First thing I want to do is generate a new problem. I want to put random numbers in here between, let's say, 1 and 9. So I'm going to double click that. And I'm going to have int num1, num2. We'll have random, and then I'll call it rand, equals new random, beginning parentheses, closing parentheses, semicolon. This creates a new object uh, called rand. That's be a random number object. So then num1 is going to equal to rand dot. And um, you see there's next here. Now that right there would return a random number. So I'm going to put a semicolon on the end. We're going to expand upon that. And this one also be a random next. That's not what I want. Let me show you. So I start this. Click the generate. Uh, I guess I ought to need to write it out to the label, don't I? Okay, so I'll say lb.num1.text um, is equal to num1.toString. lb.num2.text is equal to num2.toString. Okay. Now if I run it, and click that, you see it gives me big numbers. It's not what I want. I want to control uh, what numbers it returns. Now um, I want to generate a random number between um, 1 and 9. So I'm going to put a 9 in here, and then you put a plus 1. 9 in here, and plus 1. So that will give us a random number between 1 and 9. The book explains more about why and so forth. So now if I come up here and I generate random numbers, you see it gives me new numbers each time I click the button. Okay. Up here, and I always have to think about where to put this at. I think it's in the partial class form 1. I want to keep track of the how many is right and wrong. So I'll say int right is equal to 0. INT wrong is equal to zero. So they're both uh, equal to zero initially. Now these are going to be called global variables. We can access them anywhere. I can access them in button one here. I can access them in the form one in theory, but I think I have to do it after the initialize component. So this, this button right here, when I check the answer, I can access them directly here. Well, we're going to have num1, num2, num1 uh, is going to equal to int.parse lb num1.text and num2 is going to equal to int.parse lb num2.text and I guess I need answer too. Okay, answer this is what they put in the text box. So I'm going to say int.parse text box answer dot text. Where are my parse? Okay, so num1 and num2 came from the labels. Those are my random numbers that are generated. The answer came from the text box. So I want to check to see if num1 plus num2 is equal to my answer. If it is, then write is going to equal to write plus one else wrong is equal to wrong plus one and then I'll label these uh, LB or not label them but I want to write those out so I got my LB write dot text is equal to write dot to string and uh, lbron.txt is equal to ron.toString. Okay. 
So let's run this. Generate new num new numbers. Here I put in 25. Click check answer. That's not good. Um, it said I was wrong. Okay, generate number 48. Check answer. Okay, let's see what's going going wrong with that then. If um, they're equal to the answer, right is equal to right plus one. Else, wrong is equal to wrong plus one. We put a breakpoint in here. Didn't intend to do this, but this shows you again some debugging, trying to figure out what's going wrong with it. Okay, generate that. I put 16 in here. Click check answer. Okay, kicked out. Let's see. Num1 is 2, 8, and answer is 16. And we're checking if these two added together gives us that. So we do F11 to step into. And it went down to Ron. Those are integers. 2 plus 8 is O plus. Hmm. Let's take the breakpoint off. Click on that gray bar over there. Uh, we're doing a multiplication. Okay. Now let's start this. And generate new numbers. 54. Oops. 54, check answer. Okay, generate new number. 4, and check answer. Uh, generate new, put uh, 13 in here. Check answer. Okay, so that's working now. Now some, uh, some things that might be nice is when I check the answer, um, maybe it puts the answer down here. So that's a, and there's a project I'm going to assign that's uh, geared toward this. And you can add that in, so that you could write the real answer if they get it wrong. You just How you do that is you have a label down here. It's invisible. If they get it wrong, then you, you write the answer into that, and you make it visible. So nothing, nothing too exciting on that. Other thing you can do is you can clear out this blank. That's, that's kind of up to you and preferences of design. But that's uh, creating a tutorial using random numbers.